pray in the spiritual realm, O oh Lord. Lord, give us your instructions through your word tonight, O oh Lord. Lord, this is the only way that we hear from you, O oh God. We will not be hearing your audible voice yourself, but Lord, you will speak to us through your word. Father, we just want to thank you. Jesus, we thank you for dying on the cross for us. Holy Spirit, be upon us. Commune with us right now. Hallelujah. Over upon us. And as we speak, Lord God, we know that there will be spiritual battle in the spiritual realm, oh Lord. That is why, Lord, we ask the warring and ministering angels to encamp around us. Lord, do not allow the enemies, oh Lord, to penetrate. Lord, this place is sealed to the Holy Spirit. Lord, we are not allowing any disturbances. We are not allowing any distractions from the enemy, O Lord. And Lord, as your people, O God, we want to hear from you. Father God, speak. Lord Jesus, be our be in our midst. Holy Spirit, be with us. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let there be light. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Ang lakas ba? Praise God. Pang worship. Ma totohanan na talaga 'to. Pwede pa lang mag-worship din pastor. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So welcome to the house of the Lord. Welcome to the family of uh, Christ. So I'd like to welcome Sis Leia. Welcome to the family and welcome back again Sis Princess and of course Sheena and Abby. So, Sis Job, welcome back. So, it's really great, uh, should I say, great or good to see your beautiful faces. Beautiful and handsome faces. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So, today is Tuesday, once again. And I'm sure marami dapat tayong lakad ngayon, di ba? But praise be to God, you are here in the house of the Lord. Sabi nga ng Psalms, it's better to be in the house of the Lord than a thousand elsewhere. Kasi dito, sa bahay ng Panginoon, nandito yung pagpapala, spiritually. Uh, of course, there is joy, there is love. Mararamdaman natin yung pamilya at pagmamahal ng pamilya. Amen? Ang conditional love ng Panginoon dito natin mararamdaman, hindi sa labas. Yung sa labas, kasiyahan lang yan. But when you're in trouble, you cannot find them. Amen? Amen. So sa pamilya ng Panginoon, dito natin, mahahanap ang totoong joy. Sabi nga nila, ano ba tong mga born again na ito? Parang mga abnormal. Alive, alive. lagi masaya. Kahit may problema, nakangisi, nakatawa. Amen? So, ganun po talaga pag nasa presensya tayo ng Panginoon, we are always joyful. Amen? Joyful po tayo. Sabi nga, rejoice in the Lord always. I say, rejoice. So, ganun na lang po ang irony ng buhay ng mga Kristiyano. Laging masaya kahit puno na problema. But praise be to God kasi yung problema, huwag niyong arihin yan. Hindi yan sa inyo. When the Lord owns you, yung problema mo ay problema na ni Lord. That is why, pag dumadanas tayo ng problema, our, our, um, sa, sa, dapat sabihin natin kay Lord, Lord, may problema ka na naman. May problema ang anak mo, may problema ka na naman, Lord. Amen? Huwag nating akuin lahat ng problema kasi if we will rely on into our own strength and wisdom and understanding, talagang wala tayo sublime. We will fail. Amen. So today, uh, tonight, our topic is Becoming Unoffendable. Unoffendable. Can you all read? First 
let us define the words that we have here that we will be using tonight. Offended. Ah, meron pang the way, paano ba sa'yo? Offended. Praise God. Sino magaling dito mag-pronounce? Offended. Offended. Ay, let's hear Francis Joe. Offended. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. Praise God. Oh, so, offended. So, ang offended the word means it's an adjective. Are you all with me? Amen. Amen. Focus tayo kasi mahalaga to sa atin. Amen? Offended. It's an adjective word meaning it's resentful or annoyed typically as a result of a perceived insult. So tama? You will be offended of course kung naiinsulto tayo. Yung mga bagay na feeling natin, I don't deserve this. Amen? So meron tayong mga ganun na mga ano eh, I don't deserve this. Diba? So ang offense din, paano yung i-pronounce? Offense. Offense. Oh, praise God. It's a noun, means annoyance or resentment brought about by a perceived insult to our, or to, or disregard for oneself. So it's, uh, synonym is annoyance, anger, resentment, indignation, irritation, exasperation. So, which uh, word are you, ano, um, gusto niyo gamitin? So, anger, much easier. So, offense means anger. Diba? So, ang tanong ko ngayon, tinamaan ba tayo? Amen. Amen. Sino po dito yung balat sibuyas? Amen. Sa amin sa Bisaya, kapayasun. Ayun. Pagkapayasun, kunti nga na lang, lumalabas yung, yung, yung tawag doon, yung juice na, 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 ng papaya. Diba? So, madaling ma-offend, madaling masaktan. I believe tayong lahat ganun, di ba? You know why? Sabi dito, offenses are a part of living. So, part pala to ng ating buhay. Kasi, we live in a fallen world. And it has only gotten more prevalent. Prevalent means it's widespread. Common. Nagiging common na siya. Ibig sabihin, that's part of our nature kasi we are, we live in a fallen world and somehow, bago tayo nakakilala kay Lord, we were also fallen in nature, fallen in sin. That is why, yung natural natin sa dating buhay, madali talaga tayong ma-offend, madali talaga tayong masaktan, di ba? Especially when you are self-centered, di ba? This is what I deserve. Self righteousness, self entitlement. Ganun tayo eh. In every situation, ang lagi nating nasa utak, ano bang benepisyo ko dito? Ano bang makukuha ko dito? 'Di ba? We are so self-centered. Laging sa atin ba? Laging pabor dapat sa atin. That's how we perceive things. Gusto natin laging pabor sa akin. 'Di ba? Ganun tayong tao. And ano sabi? So, offenses are part of uh, is part of living in a fallen world. So, later on, when we will have a new earth, when we will be in our um, glorified body, when Jesus comes back, or pag namatay tayo, then we will not be living in a fallen world. That means, well, hindi na tayo, wala na yung mga, ano, uh, mga, hindi na tayo na o-offend. But we are looking forward for that time to come. Amen? So, right now, while we are still here on earth, fallen world, we always expect na eto, may mga ganito talagang uh, mangyayari. Ma-open talaga tayo. But later in our in our topic tonight, matututunan natin how to live being, becoming an open the world. Amen? So, Matthew, sabi dito, Matthew 24.10 tells us, sabi dito, and then, many will be offended. Kaya siya common, kasi ang sabi ng Bible, many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. So this is given pala sa buhay natin. Even the Bible tells us so. Amen? And even sa Bible, makikita talaga natin na marami talagang mga issues. Diba? Marami mga issues na pinapakita ang Bible. Even the very men of God, ganun din. Meron din silang mga ganun na nangyayari sa buhay nila. Amen? So, sabi dito, let's go back. Meaning to say, 
Basing on the Matthew 24, 10, many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Ibig sabihin, opportunities to be offended will always be there. But we get to choose our response. So, bear in mind, ang offense or opportunities to be offended will always be there. It will be there lurking sa, sa atin, especially sa ating mga Kristiyano. As we are being expected, ang taas nga ng expectation sa atin ng mga tao, ha, pag yan, pag Kristiyano yan, dapat hindi na yan nagkakamali, dapat hindi na yan nagagalit, di ba? Yun lagi ang pinupukol sa atin. Pag nagalit tayo with a certain situation, akala ko ba Kristiyano yan? Ganun agad, di ba? So this is uh, the most important thing that we have to bear in mind, people are expecting from you. Mm. People are expecting a lot from you guys. Believers, born again, Christians. So bear this in mind. People are expecting a lot from you. People are expecting a lot from you. To the point na I-open ka na talaga kasi hindi yan mag-retalit, hindi yan, hindi yan mag-tawag ito, hindi yan babalos. Kapag hindi ka ganti. Hindi yan gaganti. Diba? So, the thing is, as Christians, as Christians na alam na natin that we don't have to retalit, we get to choose our response. When we were not yet with the Lord, wala nang choice-choice yan. Automatic, magre-retalik ka. Automatic, gaganti ka. Amen? But when you are with the Lord, there's a, there's a choices given. Amen. You will retaliate or you will not retaliate. Gaganti or hindi gaganti. Babalos or hindi babalos. Desire, only, only desire knows. Praise God. Now, so let's Put it in mind, there will always be an opportunity to be offended. So, watch out. This is a warning for all of us. Amen? So, in today's message, we are invited to accept God's offer to no longer carry old offenses and new grudges, my friends. Amen? It's time for a new beginning. Ano new year lang last month, no? So it's still time for a new beginning. Amen. It's time to lay our pain and hurt in the arms of Jesus and receive His grace and power to live with an offendable heart. Imagine what kind of life we would be living if we had an offendable heart like Jesus. Amen? All of us knew how Jesus suffered. The agony of Jesus, the agony of Christ. And he, until his crucifixion. Diba? Pag simula pa lang niya, andun na. People are offending him always. Diba? Hindi siya tinatanggap. People doesn't believe him. Despite, in spite sa mga signs and wonders, sa mga, mga testament o yung mga testimonies na mga ginagawa ni Jesus, still people did not receive him as God or as their Lord and Savior. Diba? So, now, anong reason natin ngayon? Sabi ko kanina, because we are yung pride natin. Pride is usually the reason we take offense. Kasi kung wala tayong pride, di tayo ma-offend. Di tayo masasaktan kahit anong gawin sa atin, di ba? We are in a constant battle against this sin, the pride. Tama? So, sino walang pride dito? Pride chicken. Amen? But the Bible is telling us, God hates the proud of heart and will not go unpunished. Ang galing, no? So, paano kaya natin matutuloy ng mamuhay having an offendable heart? We discovered here, not even, kahit hindi ko ituturo dito, alam natin kung anong rason, anong pinaka-root cause bakit tayo na-offend, bakit tayo nasasaktan, bakit tayo, ano pa, Diba? Yes. Ano yun? Insensitive? Human being. Kasi tao tayo. And yes, there will always be offense na matatanggap natin from other people. But yet again, 
how do we respond to it? We discover that pride is usually the reason we take offense. But God will help us recognize negative emotions and thoughts rooted in pride. God has a beautiful plan for us actually. He wants to take us to places. He, wants, he has a wonderful plan for us. But being easily offended, take note ha. If we are being easily offended, easily, yung mabilis. Ang bilis-bilis lang, konting ano nga lang, di ba? Hindi lang napagbigyan ng gusto natin, wala na, galit na tayo. Sa pila nga lang, may sumingit lang sa iyo. Pwede pareho naman din kayong matatapos in ali, galit ka na, di ba? Ganun tayong tao. That is why it hinders us from getting to where we should be. Or it hinders the, the beautiful plan of God in our lives. So, ito pala yung reason why God is telling us not to have an open, offendable heart. Kailangan malakas ang loob mo. Laksan mo ang loob mo. Diba? Laksi ang loob. Kasi ganun po talaga. When we are living a life na in the Lord Jesus, na nasa Panginoon na tayo, we are asked to have a, a strong heart. Dapat ganun na. Hindi na tayo basta-basta na o-offend sa mga bagay-bagay. Ano ba yung madalas natin kinaka-offend personally? Hindi na pagbigyan? Nakalimutan? Or, alam mo yun, may, may binuo pa lang group chat, hindi ako nasali. <laughs> di ba? May, di ba? There are so many petty things. Ang liliit na bagay, but we take it to heart. Dinabati. Dinabati. Oh, hindi na bati sa birthday. <laughs> eh, without you knowing, na yung friend mo pala, nagkaroon din ng, may, may mga struggles din, din siya for that day. Di ba? We should learn to look at the perspective. Alam niyo, huwag lang basta-basta mag, maging judgmental tayo. We really don't know kung ano yung mga reasons ng mga tao sa paligid natin. Sometimes, alam mo yun, yung nag-away kayong dalawa, Pariho naman pala kayong tama on your own perspective, di ba? But ikaw, let's say si Ma Flora, nag sila ni Mimi. Si Mimi may point. Si Ma Flora may point. Pero hindi nila naiintindihan. Si Mimi would insist that ako ang tama, ako ang in-offend, di ba? Kasi si Ma Flora, ganito, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Naglitan niya ka na ng mga, ng mga hindi mo gusto, kahit hindi naman relevant sa sitwasyon. Same thing with Ma Flora. Ah, kasi si Mimi, ganyan yan talaga siya lagi. Pag sinusundo, laging late, ganyan, ganyan. Ang dami ng nadama na hindi naman talaga related. So, yun pala, kanya-kanya sila, may, kanya, may valid point sila. But, sa, sa perspective ni Ma Flora, hindi niya makikita. Kasi hindi naman niya alam. The same thing din kay, kay Mimi, hindi niya alam kung ano, ano din ni Ma Flora. So, that leads to Awan. Diba? Yun ang nagiging problema natin. And because of that, we are asked to have a heart, an unoffendable heart. Huwag ka masyado. Huwag kang tampo agad. We need to, to know ano ba talaga ang sitwasyon. Sabi nga nila, in every story, there is always two side of the coin. Diba? So you must learn Anong storya ng 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 the other side? Tayo din na mga ano, na mga yung spectators, wag din tayo agad mag-jump into confusion. Ay kasalanan talaga ni Flora. 'Di ba? Ay kasalanan ay may mga kumampitin kay Meme. Ay kasalanan ng ni, ni Flora or ni, ni, ni whoever among them na may kasalanan. Let's look at every situation, every side of the coin. Kailangan nating malaman ang buong story or might as well no need to know. Pag mediate ka na lang. Be a, ano ba? Mediator. Peacemaker. Sabi nga ni ng topic plus Saturday ni Mama Enz. Amen? So, ang reason nga nito ay sa pagiging apology natin. Man is always self-centered by nature. If we will not yield to God, kung hindi tayo magpapasakot sa Panginoon, this will be our tendency. Me, myself, I, and myself. Apology. Ako, ako, at ako. Ako lagi. Lagi tayong, in any situation na makikita natin yung sarili natin, lagi natin tinatanong, ano bang mapapala ko dito? Tama? Hindi tayo pupunta sa sitwasyon na wala tayong mapapala. Amen? That is why, kung bago tayo sa pananampalataya, ayaw talaga natin pumunta 
sa church. Kasi wala naman ako mapapala dyan. Kung hindi mo pala iintindihan, why we have to approach God's throne, never talaga tayong lalapit kasi mauubos ang oras ko dyan. Hindi na, wala. Killjoy yan eh. Hindi na ako sasaya. Paano na lang yung mga friends ko? Paano na lang yung mga bagay na ikinasasaya ko? Amen? Paano na lang ang uh, drinking session ko every Friday? Paano na lang yung gala ko every Saturday? Ayaw kong pumunta ng church. Ayaw kong magpasakop. Yung gusto ko lang pumunta, anytime lang na gusto ko. Ganun tayo. Pag hindi natin naiintindihan, ano yung benefits natin in coming to a church? Diba? Without us knowing kung ano ang eternal na mga beneficyo natin na nakukuha dito. We are, again, let me remind you, always kong sasabihin ito, yung time natin dito sa mundo, bilang lang. We are already in our mid mid life. That means, another half na lang. And God knows, hanggang kung makukonsume mo yung another half ng life mo. Eh, what if, God forbids, di ba? We don't know really. We don't know what tomorrow will bring us. Baka maya-maya lang, di ba? So, ganun po. Bakit? Bakit me? I, me and myself. Bakit ako logic? Kasi sabi sa 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 4. But understand this that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. La uh, for people will be lovers of self. Tinamaan? Amen. Sino dito ang hindi mahal ang sarili nila? <coughs> Ayun yung maging lovers of yourself? <laughs> yes. Naturally, we are lovers of ourselves. But eto, iba ang pinapakahulugan ng, ng salita ng Diyos nito. Lovers of self, meaning to the point of being self-centered. Anong tawag doon? Selfish. <laughs> lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Oh, be careful. Children, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, Grabe. Unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, solid with conceit. Ito na rin yun. Solid of conceit means you are not humble. You are arrogant. Di ba? Lovers of pleasure rather, rather than lovers of God. That is why, kaya pala tayo ay by by of course we we have to attribute that to our um ancestor si the mga first parents natin si Adam and Eve they fall into sin that is why man is inclined to be lovers of themselves to be selfish ganun na po ang ang fallen nature ng tao amen so the actions of loved ones ito loved ones church mates or even the unbelievers can leave us feeling offended. Lagi tayo na offend Sa trabaho, ano lagi kinaka-offend kina natin? May sipsip. May sipsip? Sip-sip. <laughs> Tama yun. That's always the case sa mga trabaho. Di ba? Meron talaga yun. Hindi talaga yun makawala. May sipsip po talaga. May mga hindi nila nagagawa ang trabaho nila and it end up na ikaw ang affected. Are you offended with that? Yes. Nau-offend ba tayo sa ganun? Yes. Diba? Nakaka-offend naman talaga. Nakaka-inis to. Sabi pa na. Diba ganun? Nakaka-inis talaga to. Yeah. Dinamay mo pa yung mga kasamahan mong hindi naman na-offend doon. Chinis-nis mo pa yun. Nakaka-inis talaga yun si, si Patrick. Ganun. Diba? Late na lang lagi. <laughs> hindi nagpapasa on time ng reports. Tingnan mo tuloy, pati yung trabaho ko affected kasi sa iyo pinapasa, hindi siya nagpasa, eh, ikaw pinagalitan ng amo. Di ba? Kakainis naman talaga. But, again, choose your response. When offense ling lingers long enough, pag nagtagal yung offense sa puso natin, it leads to unforgiveness bitterness, and so much more negative emotions. 
Dito sa binabasa ko, ang sabi, legions of negative emotions. Magpupul na yan. Magagang up na yan yung mga emotions na mararamdaman mo. If that, that offense, kunting bagay lang na offend ka at pinatagal mo sa puso mo. Di ba? It will lead you to unforgiveness. Ayaw ko lang magpanood. Lagi na lang eh. Kakainis yan. Pag pinatawad ko, gagawin naman ulit niyan. Di ba? Gagawin na naman ulit niyan. Ang tanong, ikaw ba, pag nalagay sa ganong sitwasyon, would you, is it okay na hindi ka patawarin? Di ba? Ano bang batayan natin? Ano bang timbangan natin? How do we weigh kung ano yung kasalanan ng isa sa iyo at ang kasalanan mo sa kanya? Kasi somehow, if we are, if you will be living together, er, if you are um, working together, lagi kayong magkasama araw-araw, meron at meron na talagang offense na mangyayari one way or another. You can cause offense and that person can cause offense to you as well. Tama po? Tama po? Or feeling mo, ikaw lang lagi ang ina-offend. Without self-reflection, ayaw mong tanggapin na nagkakamali ka or nakakakause ka ng sakit sa iba. Baka sensitive ka lang masyado. Without you knowing it. Diba? We always, tayo lagi ang bida ng ating storya eh. When we tell others about a story, lagi pabor sa atin. Tama? Hindi natin ikukwento kung ano din yung naging, naging attitude or behavior natin when con during the confrontation. Laging tayo ang bida. Laging tayo ang victim. We always, we tend to have that victim mentality. Pa-victim yan. Wala, wala akong mali. I'm perfect, you know? Yun ang nagiging scenario sa ating mga buhay, sa mga katilala natin, sa mga kasama natin, or even inside the family. Ganun po yun. Unhealthy for our spiritual, physical, and emotional well-being. But most notably, anong nagiging problema? Ah, di ba pala to, sorry. Ang nagiging problema natin, even that, that, that offense na nararamdaman natin, sabi natin kanina, it will lead, lead to unforgiveness, to bitterness, and so much more negative emotions. But, if the most warning, or I should say, yung pinaka-notable na, na, na magiging effect nito will be, it will hinder our prayers. According to Mark 11 verse 25, it says, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you. Amen. That your Father also in heaven may forgive you and your trespasses. Amen. So, dapat pala talaga, we should forgive right away. Ayaw, gusto mong patawarin ka ng Panginoon. Pinatawad ka ng Panginoon. Eh, ikaw, ayaw mong magpatawad. Amen? Consequently, it is important to live an offendable being unoffendable or avoid taking offense. Tama na po. Diba? So let's consider the experiences of Paul. Next to Jesus, the most most offended, offended person in the Bible is Apostle Paul. Diba? Kahit saan siya magpunta, trouble is always after him. Ang gulo lagi, laging magulo kung saan siya nagpupunta. Let's take a look at these verses. Sabi dito. When Saul, who was also known Paul, because later on, he was the Saul who was the chief of the sinners. He is the executionist of the believers of Jesus. Pinapatay niya yan. Bago, siya naging, bago niya nakilala si Jesus, siya yung pumapatay sa mga believers. And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, so this time, itong Acts 9 na ito, naging believer na siya. Na-encounter na niya si Jesus, and he accepted the mission of Jesus sa buhay niya. So ngayon, lumalapit ngayon si, si Saul sa mga co-believers or disciples. And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. Sabi nila, baka kunwari lang yan, kasi gusto tayong patayin yan. Amen? 
And in Acts, uh, 2 Corinthians 11.26, sabi dito, In journeys open, in perils of waters, ito yung mga pinagdaanan ni Paul. In perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils of the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, and in perils among false brethren. So, when, when Saul converted to Christianity, na-encounter niya lahat ng ito. Diba? If I was Paul at that time, sasabihin ko, yung una, Lord, ganito pala. Before siya naging, naging Christiano, alam mo, ang sarap ng buhay niya. Ang sarap ng buhay niya. He was, parang talagang ano siya, uh, alam mo yun, yung at his command nag yung mga tao niya. Diba? He is also a Pharisee. And we know, kung nasa position ka at that time, masarap ang buhay. But here comes Paul right now, or Saul. Lahat ng to, pinagdaanan niya. Lahat ng to. It could really open him dapat, no? Kung, kung, kung dating buhay pa lang niya, kung hindi talaga niya naintindihan ang, ang tinanggap niya mula sa Panginoong Jesus. Speaking of the false brothers, sabi niya, yet because of false brothers secretly brought in who slipped sorry ah, yet because of the false brothers secretly brought in who slipped in to spy out our freedom that we have received in Christ Jesus so that they might bring us into slavery. Meron pang mga traidor na mga um, so-called believers. Pero tinatraidor siya. Gusto siyang ipahuli. Diba? Somehow Paul had experienced hurt from the church brethren. Diba? Hindi lang ito basta sa mga unbelievers. Mismo galing sa simbahan. Have we experienced that? Did we, did we receive hurt or pain from our co-believers? Diba? And how did it affect you? Somehow, ayaw nyo, ayaw nyo na mag-church. Ayaw ko na. Ganun pala doon. Bahay na lang ako. Akala ko ba ang church, mababait lahat ng tao dyan? Akala ko ba, pag church, pinagharian na yan ng Panginoong Yesus? Dapat ganito na yan. Dapat ganyan na yan. Diba? Ang dami natin expectations. But mind you, brothers and sisters in Christ, a church is a hospital for sinners. There is no perfect church. Alam natin yun. Kahit saan tayo mapunta, meron at meron tayo mapupunan. Amen? Amen. I remember a story. Sabi nga niya, Pastor, nagpaalam na. Pastor, magpapaalam na ako. Bakit? dami kong hindi nagustuhan sa church niyo. Bakit? Si ganito, nagagaling ganito ang kasalanan niya, pero nagpupunta pa rin sa church, tinagolerate niyo. Si ganito, nagaganyan, nagchat-chat lang naman yan pag nasa church. Si ganyan, ganito lagi ang suot. Si ganyan, di ba? Ang dami, ang dami. Name it. And you all have it in the church. So sabi ni Pastor, sige, bago pa umalis, attend this next service. Bakit Pastor? Basta umatin ka lang. And then the next service, umatin. Pinabitbit ni Pastor ng baso ng tubig. Sige, umikot ka dyan. Umikot ka. Malaki ang simbahan eh. Umikot ka. And then, the service has ended. Tinanong ni Pastor. So ngayon, ano ang napuna mo? Ah, wala Pastor. Busy kasi ako sa mabibigit ng tubig. Baka matapon. You see, when you are focused, hindi mo makikita yung mga bagay nyo. Amen. And what does the Lord is telling us? Focus our eyes to God. Amen. Because kung sa tao ka nakatingin, wala. Sablay. Wala talaga tayong mararating. And it will always lead us into Madapa talaga tayo. Wala na talaga tayo. Ayaw na natin pumunta doon sa simbahan pag ganun. That is why, naiintindihan ko na dati sabi ko, bakit sabihin nila hindi, dapat hindi nakatingin sa tao. Dapat hindi nakatingin sa tao. Eh talagang makikita mo yan eh. Kasakasama mo sa church eh. Makikita mo talaga yung mga mga sablay. Makikita mo talaga yung mga sin nila. Diba? Just like you. Bakit perfect ka ba? Diba? Perfect ba tayo to judge them? We are also here kasi nagpapaturo tayo. 
we are also here kasi we are also a sinner. Kailangan, kailangan natin ng hospital. Amen. Amen? So, ganun lang pala. Gusto mong hindi mo makita yung mga kasalanan ng iba? Focus to Jesus. Amen. Focus on the things above. Amen. Hindi yung mga mali ng mga tao sa paligid natin. Amen? So, ano pang pinagdaanan ni, ano, ni Paul? Sabi nga niya dito, siya ang pinakasalanan sa lahat, di ba? Sabi niya, of whom I am chief. The sinner daw siya, of whom I am chief. Sabi niya, then Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord went to the high, to the high priest. So, ito yung nagpapatunay na talagang masama ang intensyon ni Paul sa mga dati. Nung bago siya, bago niya nakilala si Jesus, ay hindi nakilala, bago niya na-encounter si Jesus personally. Ganito ang ginagawa ni Paul. Pumupunta siya sa high priest, give me the authority, pupunta ako doon sa Damascus, he, he, he will run after the believers para ma-execute. Diba? So because of this, alam ni Paul, alam ni Paul kung gaano ang grasya ng Panginoon na binigay sa kanya, naiintindihan niya. Sa, sa sobrang sama niya, and yet the Lord forgave him. The Lord still commissioned him to do works for God. So ibig sabihin, kahit pala gaano tayo kamakasalanan mga kapatid, we still have that chance or still the Lord will entrust to us mga mga bagay na may mga, may mga ipapagawa talaga ang pang ng Panginoon sa atin. The problem is kung hindi natin tatanggapin 'yon at kung hindi natin may encounter talaga si Lord, wala talaga. Amen. So let's open our hearts. Let's open our hearts kasi meron at merong ipapagawa ang Panginoon. Amen. Let's just read this. Yung suffering ni ni Paul sa his suffering for Christ. Sabi niya, are they Hebrews? So am I. Ito na yung, di ba, hindi ina-acknowledge yung pagiging apostle niya kasi hindi daw siya, hindi daw niya personally na-encounter ang Panginoong Yesus. Kino-question ang legitimacy ng kanyang apostleship. So ngayon, sabi ni Paul, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. Baliw si, si, si Paul when it comes to preaching. Di ba? Baliw siya when it comes to sharing the love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi niya, I am more. In labors, more abundant. Mas nagpagal siya. In stripes above measure. In prison, more frequently. Mas maraming beses akong na, na, napasok sa kulungan more than them. In death, Often, kahit saan siya mapunta, kahit saan siya mapunta, mayroong mahabol sa kanyang gusto siyang patayin. Because of the message that he brought, because of the gospel. From the Jews, tama ba? Okay. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. 39 stripes, five times niyang na-experience na, na yun. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. And a night and a day I have been in the deep. Kita nyo kung gano'ng pinagdaanan ni Paul? In journeys often, in perils of water, ito na yung kanina, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils of the wilderness, in perils of the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness and toil, in sleepless, sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Sinong nakaranas na nito at sabihin nyo ngayon na masama ang loob nyo sa Panginoon? Di ba? Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily? My deep concern for all the churches. Despite sa mga nararanasan niya, ang concern pa rin ni Paul is the concern for the churches. Amen. How selfless, di ba? From a being selfish person to a selfless man. Hindi niya iniinda kung ano yung mga pagdadaanan at pinagdadaanan niya. Ang gusto lang niya ay ma- 
ma-carry out niya kung anong pinagpagawa sa kanya ng Panginoon. Ito na ba yun? Who is sweet then? And I am not weak. Who is made to stumble? And I do not burn with indignation. If I must boast, I will boast in the thing which concerns my infirmity. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas the king was guarding the city of Damascus of Damascus with a garrison, desiring to arrest me. But I was let down in a basket through a window. Kung dati siya nagpo-porso sa mga believers, ngayon siya na ang pinapatakas. Let down, through, sumakay siya sa basket para ipaano siya sa wall. Through a window in the wall and escape from his hands. Just to escape from the, ano, ngayon may pumalit na sa kanya. Siya na ngayon ang hinahabol. From being, ano yun, siya ang nagpo-porso sa mga believers, ngayon siya na ang pinaporso. Di ba? Paul's life is a perfect example for us to examine as we become unoffendable. Take the life of Paul. Diba? He was an entitled man in, 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 in his place. Saan ba siya? Sa Jerusalem? Or sa Israel? He was a, a dignified man in Israel. Kilala, kilala siya sa mga teachers of the law. In fact, isa siya sa magaling na estudyante ni Gamalel? Gamalel. Sino si Gamalel? Isang batikang Pharisee. So, this is the perfect example. Diba? He dealt with church hurt, but he did not let the actions of other Christians define her perception of God who saved him from his evil ways. According sa Acts 9 mo, kanina, diba? Siya yung nagpupurso, ngayon siya yung pinupurso. Now, eto, sabi niya, for our light affliction, sa lahat ng pinagdaanan niya kanina, nakita niya, basa natin, no? Grabe. Pero anong tawag niya doon? Light affliction. Light lang. <laughs> diba? Paul lived to fulfill the Great Commission, yet he faced min many adversities. Ang dami niya pinagdaanan. Paul could have taken offense that God allowed him to face trials and tribulations. Lord, bakit naman? Tayo ngayon, pag nagsiserve, konting testing lang, konting trials lang, kinukwestiyon na agad natin si Lord, no? How much more? Kung pinagdaanan mo yung pinagdaanan ni Paul, ano na lang kaya? Saan ka na ngayon pupulutin? But he did not take offense. That is why he even called those uh, church hurt and dangerous situations that he encountered or under God, a light of lection. Sabi niya, for our light of lection, which is, which is but for a moment, praise God, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So, ito pala ang key. Looking at the things that are eternal. Ano sabi? If third part, di ba? Is working. So yung mga afflictions pala natin, yung mga nangyayari sa ating buhay, is working for us, not working against us. It's working for us. Sabi nga, all things work for good. Of those, for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. So lahat ng afflictions, lahat ng mga trials natin ngayon, testings, it is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Amen. Praise God! So, kapit lang mga kapatid. Hayaan nyo na yung mga nang offend It will not do you good if you will retaliate. In all these instances, we see that Paul valued his salvation more than anything. Tama? Amen. He was saved. And this is more important to him. He valued God's love so much that his earthly challenges, yung mga challenges niya, it doesn't matter anymore to him. Paul was the one who confidently proclaimed that 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Mm -hmm. Shall tribulation? Shall distress? Or, or distress? Or persecution? Or famine? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Diba? We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Ang buhay kristyano pala, if talagang uh, nangin natin yan, tatayuan natin to, we are killed all day long. Punta tayo sa mga lugar wherein Christianity is prohibited. And you will see. Try a mission. And then you will see if you will not tremble with fear. Alam mo yung takot ka kung sino yung mga kasalamuhan mo, baka ito na yung, mag baka ito na yung pol ng buhay ko. Ay, saul ng buhay ko. Di ba? So we are like sheep for, uh, we are accounted as sheep for slaughter. So when you are carrying the gospel, when you are preaching the gospel, expect this. But again, go back tayo sa sinabi kanina na it is working for us. So now, paano maging unoffendable? Knowing the person of Jesus. So dito, it is truly amazing how Jesus took offense in scripture compared to how we take offense today. Dati, so, next, sabi ko kanina, next to Jesus is Paul. Now, let's take the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi dito, after all that Jesus had suffered from the agony, yung agony niya, during the cross, yung bago pa siya i-crossify, di ba? Kung babasahin natin yun, napakahaba. But, if you have time, you can read it in Luke 22 to 23. Doon natin makikita ang mga pinadaanan ni Jesus from the Garden of Gethsemane when He prayed, shedding blood. Yung, yung pawis niya. Sweat of blood. Yung betrayal and arrest in Gethsemane. When Peter denies Him, di ba? When, eto na lang, yung kaibigan niyang si Judas, who? Betrayed him with a kiss. Diba? Kung tayo yun ay, friendship over. So what? I don't need a friend kung ibibetray lang din ako. Amen? But, ang sabi ni Jesus on the cross before he died? Father, and Jesus said, Father, Father forgive, them, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Kaya natin yun? Durog na durog na yung puso natin and then we can pray for that person. Father, forgive him. Forgive her, for she or he does not know what she was doing. Amen? Amen. Sakit nun. And of course, we will be able to become an offendable if we know the love of God and accept it. Sabi ng Romans 5.8, Paano niya dinemonstrate ang kanyang pagmamahal? But God demonstrate His own love towards us. In that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Kalaban ka pa ng Lord. Enemy ka pa ng Lord. Namatay na siya para sa'yo. What kind of love He has for us? Diba? Kaya natin yun? Can we die for the people who is mocking us? Can we die for our enemies? No, right? But si Jesus, while, while we are still sinners, pag sinners tayo, enemy tayo ng Panginoon, He died for us. What a radical love it is. Amen? Amen. Another way. Know how much you are forgiven. Amen. If you knew how much you are forgiven, my dear friends, then it is not easy to take offense. Sabi ko nga kanina, paano mo mag-gauge na yung taong hindi mo pinapatawad, mas malaki pa yung kasalanan niya sa'yo? May, may, may timbangan ba tayo doon? Are there any ways, scale, specially made for that? Wala, di ba? Kaya huwag ka ng ano. Let's know how much we are forgiven. Sa so Luke 7, verse 41 to 43. Di ba? You know this story. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Now ang tanong, Therefore, which of them will love him more? Sa nagpautang, sino ang sino ang mas ang mas ano, yung may ano siya? Mas ano yung mas masaya siya na hindi na siya pinabayad. 
And then, sumagot si Simon. Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, You have rightly judged. Siyempre, kung sino yung mas malaki ang utang, siya ang mas malaking utang na loob. Amen? Imagine that. Therefore, I say to you, ito yung babae, di ba, na ano, which are many are forgiven for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Tama po ba? Pag tayo po, dalawa kayo kunwari, may utang kayo. Di syempre, ang mas malaki yung may utang, siya yung mas thankful. Mas mamahalin niya yung nag-forgive nag, nag or nag, hindi na nagpabayad. Kung gaano kalaki yung utang mo, ganun din yung kalaki yung utang na loob mo. Ganun lang yun. Amen? So, again, forgive as you have forgiven. Pasa nito. So, this was a, the parable of the unforgiving servant. Kukwento ko na lang. So, syempre, uh, may utang siya sa master. Dapat, ikukul na yung, ikukulong na yung family niya. So, he pleaded with the master, huwag mo na po akong ikulong, patawarin niyo po ako, just give me time. So, pinatawad. Ngayon, as time goes by, mayroon din ibang kasamahan niya na may utang sa kanya. And then, what he did? Pinurso talaga niya na bayaran siya. And then, walang may babayad yung kasama niya. So, ang ginawa niya, pinakulong din niya. So, he was not forgiving as he was forgiven. Di ba? Paano kaya yun? Tayo ba ganun tayo? Pinatawad tayo ng Panginoon, tapos ayaw natin magpatawad. Or pinatawad, or, or pina, binigyan ka ng pardon. Nakarisip ka ng pardon, ayaw mo magpardon sa iba. Di ba? Hindi. So, that is why, nung makita, nung mga kasamahan pa nila, na yun ang treatment niya sa isang niyang kasama, sino mo siya ngayon sa master? Asa na tayo? Sino mo sa master? So when his fellow servants saw that what had taken place, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! Gusto ba natin masabihan nun? Pag natin natin sa langit. You wicked servant, hindi ka nagpapatawad. I forgive you all the debt that, all the debt because you pleaded with me. And should you not have mercy on your fellow servant? As I had mercy on you, and in anger his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. Gusto natin mangyari sa atin yun? When you were forgiven, forgive also. Otherwise, mabawiin talaga sa inyo ang binigay na pardon sa inyo. Or binigay na gracia sa inyo. Or mercy, di ba? And he was asked to repay all that he Oh, to the master. Sabi dito, when it turns sa pagpapatawad, sabi sa Matthew 18, verse 38, So also, my heavenly Father will do to you, every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Mga ah, kapatid, we are already saved. Huwag po nating hayaan na yung unforgiveness natin ang mag-cause sa atin ng, stum ma ma ng stumbling block. You see, ang sabi dito, if you will not forgive others or your brother, your father will do to you also. That means, kung papatawarin ka ng Panginoon, kung pinatawad mo yung kapatid mo or yung mga tao, you will also be forgiven. Ibig sabihin, pag hindi mo pinatawad, ano ka baliktaran? Ano? Kung hindi ka nagpatawad, you, you will not be forgiven as well. Let us not, ano ba, huwag natin i-salvage yung salvation natin. Save ka na eh. Why can't you forgive? Gusto mo, ayaw ka rin patawarin. Amen? In Acts 20, 24, verse 15 to 16, And have hope towards God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection. Ay, parang ano na to. I think we can end with this. Sabi dito, um, being unoffendable, we have a choice. Amen? We must choose not to normalize or justify feeling offended. Huwag po natin i-normalize yun. Huwag natin i-justify. No matter what it is, kahit ano pa yung rason natin, why we are offended. It's okay to be offended, but huwag po tamang tirhan. 
While God empowers us to do His will, He gives us free will to choose. Today and every day, we must choose to live unoffendable and depend on God to help us. According to Zechariah, how do we depend on God? This is, uh, so he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by, by, uh, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Yun na naman talaga ang ano natin. Amen? And of course, having a choice, let's have a spiritual purpose. Let's have in mind, live in an eternity conscious. Being eternity conscious was Paul's spiritual strategy for keeping his conscience free of offense. So if we, our eyes is focused on God or on the things above, on eternal glory, so when we are more conscious of the eternal or spiritual benefits of living and offendable, forgiving those who offend us will become easier. Kung ang mata natin is looking forward for the eternal things to come, mas madaling magpatawad pa lang. Amen. So, let's have the uh, spiritual purpose. Sabi sa Corinthians 15:19, if in the life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men must be men must most miserable. Kung yung alam mo yung pagpapagal natin dito, only we have hope in Christ. Kung hope lang daw ang meron tayo at hindi totoo na mga to, tayo pinakakawawa. <laughs> no? So, we, our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ, so let's live with a spiritual purpose. So it will be here, and I believe now the question is, are you willing to lose eternity with Jesus because of offense? Gusto ba natin yun? We are living in of, and with having an offended heart. It will hinder our prayers, it will hinder everything, our, our spiritual blessing. It will hinder the will of God in our lives because of offense. Amen? So let's not do that. Huwag natin sayangin ang pagpapagal natin. Huwag natin sayangin ang oras na ginugugol natin, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, having faith in Him, and yet we are, we, we stumble with the offense that we have. So anytime we are tempted to walk away from faith because we have been mistreated or disrespected, let us remember Paul's life and even Jesus and the price Jesus paid for our salvation. May the love of God consume our hearts in the name Jesus. of Jesus. Let us all stand. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lord, Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for yet again another um, pagtuturo mo sa amin, Panginoon, on how to live this life, O oh Lord, uh, being an offendable, O Lord, by heart. Lord, we uh, declare, decree, O oh Lord, na Yung grasya mo sa amin, Panginoon, will cover our hearts, O oh Lord, yes, against yes. those um, being offended, O oh Lord. Lord, uh, salamat for reminding us once again, Panginoon, how to become an offendable while we are waiting of your return, O oh God. Lord, maraming salamat, Panginoon. May you be glorified with our lives, O oh God. May you be lifted high, Panginoon, yung pangalan ko sa buhay namin. We give you thanks, honor, and glory, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.